Hip disarticulation. Hip disarticulation occasionally is indicated after massive trauma, for arterial insufficiency, for infection, for example, infected subtrochanteric nonunion, necrotizing fasciitis, or for certain congenital limb deficiencies. Most frequently, however, hip disarticulation is necessary for treatment of bone or soft tissue sarcomas of the femur or thigh that cannot be resected adequately by limb sparing methods. The inguinal or iliac lymph nodes are not routinely removed with hip disarticulation. The anatomical method of Boyd and the posterior flap method of Slocum are described here, however, modifications frequently are required based on location of pathology technique. Make an anterior racket shaped incision, figure, beginning the incision at the anterior superior iliac spine and curving it distally and medially almost parallel with the pupart ligament to a point on the medial aspect of the thigh 5 cm distal to the origin of the adductor muscles. Isolate and ligate the femoral artery and vein, divide the femoral nerve, continue the incision around the posterior aspect of the thigh about 5 cm distal to the ischial tuberosity and along the lateral aspect of the thigh about 8 cm distal to the base of the greater trochanter. From this point, curve the incision proximally to join the beginning of the incision just inferior to the anterior superior iliac spine. Detach the sartorius muscle from the anterior superior iliac spine and the rectus femoris from the anterior inferior iliac spine and reflect them both distally. Divide the pectineus about 0.6 cm from the pubis. Rotate the thigh externally to bring the lesser trochanter and the iliopsoas tendon into view. Divide the latter at its insertion and reflect it proximally. Detach the adductor and gracilis muscles from the pubis, and divide at its origin that part of the adductor magnus that arises from the ischium. Develop the muscle plane between the pectineus and obturator externus and short external rotators of the hip to expose the branches of the obturator artery. Clamp, ligate, and divide the branches at this point. Later in the operation, the obturator externus muscle is divided at its insertion on the femur instead of at its origin on the pelvis because otherwise the obturator artery may be severed and might retract into the pelvis, leading to hemorrhage that could be difficult to control. Rotate the thigh internally, and detach the gluteus medius and minimus muscles from their insertions on the greater trochanter, and retract them proximally. Divide the fascia latar and the most distal fibers of the gluteus maximus muscle distal to the insertion of the tensor fasciae late muscle in the line of the skin incision, and separate the tendon of the gluteus maximus from its insertion on the linea aspera. Reflect this muscle mass proximally. Identify, ligate, and divide the sciatic nerve. Divide the short external rotators of the hip, i.e., the piriformis, gemelli, obturator internus, obturator externus, and quadratus femoris, at their insertions on the femur, and sever the hamstring muscles from the ischial tuberosity. Incise the hip joint capsule and the ligamentum teres to complete the disarticulation, figure. Bring the gluteal flap anteriorly, and suture the distal part of the gluteal muscles to the origin of the pectineus and adductor muscles. Place a drain in the inferior part of the incision, and approximate the skin edges with interrupted non-absorbable sutures. Bring the gluteal flap anteriorly, and suture the distal part of the gluteal muscles to the origin of the pectineus and adductor muscles. Place a drain in the inferior part of the incision, and approximate the skin edges with interrupted non-absorbable sutures. Thanks for watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe to my non-profit YouTube channel.